Hello, I'm Stu from Robert White's and today I'd just like to show you very quickly um, some little finer points and details about the Schneider tilt shift lenses. A lot of people ask us what they're all about, why you need those movements. So today we're just going to show you just one or two little things. Most people associate tilt shift lenses with architectural work, but really they're very, very, very at home in the studio and they can save you hours of time and really polish your images, not only in creatively extending or reducing your depth of field, but also keeping things geometrically correct. This particular little shot um, is just a basic pack shot really, but very quickly we can um, produce a much higher quality image just by playing with camera movements. So we're using this tilt shift lens to, to show how we can extend our depth of field. We are, we're shooting wide open, so on this lens, this is the 50mm Schneider tilt shift, we are at 2.8. And if I use the live view function on the back of the D7000, we can see that, um, I'll just zero everything first. So we can see if I focus the lens, so the tip of the tape measure is nice and sharp. And then if I scroll up, bearing in mind that I'm at 100%, we can see that everything drifts out of focus. So we know that if we shoot wide open with this lens, we're going to have very narrow depth of field. If I take it back, so we can see the end of the tape all the way back here, but then I zoom back in again, and then I'm going to put just front tilt in. I'm not going to touch the focus control. So front tilt, bearing in mind that I focused vaguely first at the tip of the tape. I'm not focusing as such, I'm just putting in front tilt. And we can see that this is starting to really crispen up back here. In fact, if I look all the way back to the tip, we can actually see it's sharp all the way back to the edge where the tape is. Now if I scroll forward, I'm bringing it back to the front section. We can see that just with a minor, minor tweak, I can ensure that tip there is sharp. Go back again. And just a, with a slight tweak of tilt, I can ensure we'll have sharpness clearly from front to back. And we're doing that at maximum aperture. The advantage with that is we can use our lens at its most um, uh, precise apertures, at the apertures where the lens is designed to work at its best. Often to extend your depth of field, you tend to stop the lens down far too much. The sweet spot of this particular lens, this is the 50mm, is probably around about f11. That will give us the best compromise between depth of field and resolution so we don't suffer adverse re uh, effects from diffraction. So um, it's a really nice, easy to, um, to control effect. If I tried to do the same thing just simply by stopping it down, it would still drift out of focus very, very clearly, and we would suffer from diffraction because I would be tempted to stop it down past f11. Even though this lens will stop down to 32, um, it's far, far better to use it at its optimum apertures. So this is a typical sort of shot that um, can cause people problems in the studio. Now, it's exactly the same sort of problem that you'd get if you're taking a picture of a building. You can see that this box is actually leaning in at the top, so just sort of here and here. The same thing as if you shot a picture of a building, you get your converging verticals. We have the same because we're shooting above the box and down. One of the things that made 5x4 so attractive was the fact that you had control over perspective so that we can, if we were to just level this up, there's a nice little spirit level on the top of this tripod head. I can use the front rise and fall mechanism. I'm, I'm actually going to use fall. If it were building, we'd normally use rise. And I'm going to lower the front. And you can see, hopefully, that what we're able to do is to still keep everything nice and parallel. Let's move it around. But we're still shooting from the top of the box. So, and then if I needed just a fine, fine little bit of tilt, the converging verticals are nowhere near as bad as they would have been had we um, been shooting straight down. So it means that we can keep things geometrically correct. And if I zoom in quite clearly, this is the 50mm Schneider tilt shift lens. We can see here is our sharp point of focus. And then if I just gently, oh, there it is, move. There is my front point of focus. And if I move everything back, 
we can see that things are starting to drift out but then I could use front tilt should I wish just to bring that point of focus back in again and just verify at the front here so we can see we've now got a sharp point of focus this is still why don't we haven't stopped down at all so this is 2.8 then once we stop down just that tiny little bit we'll find that everything will crispen up completely because we'll be in the sweet spot of the lens's apertures and we'll have extended depth of field and we'll also be keeping it geometrically correct. It's one of the things that sets a professional photographer apart from an amateur, especially on a shot like this. So I'm just going to zero the lens again, set it back to its standard fixed settings. One of the things you have to remember with this is it works just like a large format lens in that we have to set our aperture manually, we have to focus manually, but then we also have to stop the lens down to the working aperture. This allows us to view at maximum aperture all the time, as long as we're focusing and composing, but then before we shoot the picture we have to stop the lens down. Uh, the advantage to this is that the lens has no uh, electronic input to the camera, so it doesn't tell the camera what aperture is in use, um, or what amount of shifts in use, but it does allow us to be able to change the mount. The actual lens is exactly the same whether you buy it in the Nikon, the Canon, the Sony or the Pentax mount. It is just it is just a different mount here. If you were to buy it in a Canon mount but then decided to jump ship to Nikon or vice versa, you can merely buy a replacement mount which is available from us. Um, you take this mount off, put the new mount on, remembering to keep any shims that are supplied in place with the lens, and then you can convert it from Canon to Nikon or Nikon to Pentax, or whatever it might be. You could, of course, buy it in a Nikon mount and then use a high-quality precision Nikon to Canon adapter, so therefore it makes it very, very quick to change from one to another. It means it's good for a busy working studio, especially where you have different photographers using different systems. Very good for rental as well.